Bismillahirrahmanirrahim <coughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da Habatifillah Continue on in our study The methodology of the Salaf al-Salih And the Ummah's need for it We mentioned the statement of Imam Malik That Shaykh Salih bin Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala mentioned a very powerful statement of Imam Malik who said, La yasla akhir hadhi al umma illa ma aslaha awalaha. That the, this nation, the latter part of this nation, will not be corrected or not be rectified except with that which with the early generations were rectified with or corrected with. Ahabat to Filah, why is this a profound statement? This is very profound because it's a very general statement which contains a very high and powerful meaning and lets us know that the Salaf of this Ummah believed in the path of the Salaf, in the path of those who preceded them. And we're talking about those third, the third generation, the Tabi'in, the Taba'i Tabi'in, uh, and those who followed them. That they realized that even in their time, they had to fight false ideologies. They had to fight Shubahat and Shahwat that had run rampant in the Ummah and outside of the Ummah. And they knew that the rectification of the Ummah to deal with those ills to deal with those social ills, to deal with the issues of their day and time, to deal with the, the deviation that had entered into the ranks of the believers from those early sects, like the Khawarij, those who met, made takfir of Muslims for committing major sins, who regarded them to be disbelievers, and who rebelled against the Muslim authority made takfir of them, etc. And likewise the Qadariya, those groups who, from a group of them who denied uh, Allah subhanahu wa the most extreme amongst them, denied that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing, that He knows uh, the divine destiny, and that He knows the ending of matters and affairs, the outcome. And from amongst those deviant sects came the Shia, the original group of the Shia, and then the later splits, the Rafida and other groups who made takfir of the Sahaba, who cursed the Sahaba and made that a part of their religion. Not only did they do it, it wasn't an offhanded thing, but these are almost, you could say, a pillar of their creed to curse the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een. Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, those early Imams and those after them, and in the time of Imam Malik, before and after, they knew that rectification, rectification of the Ummah would come through returning back to the Madhab of the Salaf in order to understand and have the proper Islamic tasawwur, the Islamic vision of how to deal with issues, contemporary issues. And now we have even more complexities to face and greater dangers to our, 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 our religion and ideologies. Many knew what they had and many more. And the rectification still comes by returning back to what they're upon because if we don't, the danger is, if we don't, we lose our deen as the Jews and the Christians lost their way. That we will follow those who had the knowledge and didn't practice the knowledge. And we'll follow those who did not have the knowledge but who were very zealous in practicing. And we have those traits from the extremists amongst us, those tekfiris and so forth. Many of them, especially the ones who involved themselves in the attacks in the West and so forth, they have no knowledge. A lot of times they are youth who are the, the worst of youth, who don't pray, who drink, who womanize, 
who are homosexuals, who are doing all kind of foul crimes and sins, then on top of that they become supposedly religious or inspired overnight and they do these evil acts. And then they claim that's in the name of Islam. So that's zealousness on misguidance and ignorance. Likewise, there are those from amongst us, and may Allah protect us from being any of those categories, Amin ya Rabbil Alameen, who have knowledge, but they don't practice that knowledge. They don't act upon what they are supposed to be uh, practicing. And this is the other way in which some of us will and do go astray. So the only rectification of that is returning back to the madhab of the Salaf and practicing it, understanding it. And as Imam Fozan already mentioned in the prior lessons, it's by having ilm. You have to have knowledge of the madhab of the Salaf. As Imam Bukhari said, and he titled in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, a chapter, Babun al-ilm, qabla al-qawli wal-amal. The chapter, knowledge precedes actions and statements letting us know we have to have knowledge in order to in order to practice Islam correctly and we have to have knowledge in order to rectify our nation and getting back to another important point because a lot of times we look at the complexities all of us and we can't help but say hey this is 1400 years later look at the technology we have look at this look at that things the reality of traveling for example is not like the reality of traveling in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now you can travel across the globe in hours in so many hours within 24 hours now you can travel very far distance wise in a very short period of time so therefore then some begin to look at those texts which say that a woman should not uh, travel without a muhram. How do we understand that now? Likewise, many, many other things which are many more complex issues. Times change. Realities change. We have to have the fiqh of the salaf to be, to be able to return. We have to return back to the fiqh of the salaf. And we have to apply that fiqh with our new realities and the new complexities. And this can only happen with the ulama, those scholars, those razakun of ilm, who can look at the contemporary issues, contemporary realities, contemporary, contemporary differences from that of the time when the legislation was revealed and to that of the time of the salaf of this ummah and how to interpret and understand and practice and rectify the ummah and not be like those people who discard the madhab of the salaf and say hey it's a new era it's time for totally new fiqh it's time for totally new aqidah even that they will be they say hey we live in it we're a muslim minority we'll have wahda to adyan we, we will we will be one religion because we need to get along with our christian neighbors and jewish neighbors and this neighbors and that neighbors and so then they throw away the creed of Islam and that's why that's kufr that takes you out of the fold of Islam that doesn't mean you can't have relations with someone of another faith La. but what we're talking about is those people who you know, they compromise Islam and they believe that they actually in their aqidah in their creed they believe all of those faiths are going to Jannah going to paradise no otherwise there would be no need for us to embrace Islam if we were all going to Jannah, all the contemporary after the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that all those other previous messages were abrogated. They'd become corrupted. The Qutub had become corrupted. And the people had become corrupt. And the people had gone away from Tawheed. That's why the rectification comes back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It comes back to understanding the correct Islamic creed and the correct Islamic Tawheed and what Tawheed necessitates. And the Imam mentioned, Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan, he mentioned the ayat, he said, we should ask Allah, اِهْدِنَ الصُّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ 
Surat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim Guide us to the straight path The path of those whom you have blessed Or those who you've given blessings He said we should continuously ask Allah to allow us to traverse this path And to remain firm upon it This is mandatory It's an, oblig it's ob an obligation Because it's, it's a part of Surat al-Fatiha the affair is not that we merely ascribe to this methodology, that we merely say we're Salafi, we merely say we're Ahl Sunnah, we merely say we're Muslim, we're merely... No, nah, we have to practice, we have to understand and claim to follow it. A claim void of proof is invalid. The affair is not that we merely ascribe, this is because Allah stated, وَالَّذِينَ تَبِهُمْ bi'ahsan," And also those who follow them exactly in faith, meaning they follow them with perfection. And one cannot perfect the way of the Salaf except with knowledge of their methodology. And one cannot hold firm to it except that he is patient upon it. One must not listen to the false deviant claims which seek to divert you from the path. Indeed, this is the correct path, the path of salvation. All of the other paths will lead you to the hellfire except one. The companions radiallahu ta'ala'anu majma'in asked, which path is saved, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He replied, those who are upon what I and my companions on are, are upon today. This is the way of the Salaf. This is the way of salvation, which will lead to Jannah. There is no other path, and every other path is astray. So, a habit of Allah, this lets us know that the Saratullah is what we want to traverse. And our rectification will come through traversing that path in the way that the early generations held on to it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many shortcomings and bless us with ilm al-nafi wa rizqan tayyib wa amalun mutaqabbilan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.